Humans know a lot, but think about this. Everything we know, everything we've made, and everything we can do started as a question. Every solution started from a problem, and every answer came out of a question. History is often taught as a list of answers. Big history is driven by questions that invite and inspire students to investigate on deeper. How exactly does the course do this? For one thing, our model of inquiry focuses on four key elements. One, framing questions to investigate called driving questions. Two, applying historical and scientific concepts. Three, evaluating and using claims from a wide range of sources for communicating conclusions. Each unit of the Big History Project starts with a driving question. Questions like, why do we look at things from far away and up close? How and why do theories become generally accepted? What are the positive and negative impacts of interconnection? Each lesson offers new ways for students to grapple with and explore these big questions. Teachers of big history often take the driving question, or DQ, and put it on the wall in great big letters. But that keeps it front and center, an important reminder that all historical and scientific investigations start with wonder and curiosity. At the beginning of each unit, we have kids do a driving question notebook activity. The DQ notebook is like a journal. Students use it to capture their initial thinking and make conjectures about the driving question. In each unit, the opening entry hooks the students into the content and helps them think about the videos and articles that come later. Then later on in the unit, students get to revisit their conjectures using evidence from the text they've read to track how their thinking has changed. It's useful to ask students how the text in the unit supported, deepened, or challenged their thinking. And of course, when we say text, we mean all of the unit content, including videos, articles, and infographics. A big challenge for students is learning how to apply these new concepts and big ideas. They have to go beyond just memorizing definitions because it isn't just about what happened where and when. That's just history. The big thing about this course is that it looks at how events interconnect with each other and with the world kids live in right now. Thresholds, complexity, and claim testers are tools students can take out of the classroom and use in their own lives. That's right. Studying the rise and fall of an agrarian civilization can help a student build a website or cook a meal. That's what makes this kind of history so big. We encourage you to introduce the idea of thresholds of increasing complexity early and return often to help students make sense of how the different pieces of the big history puzzle fit together. You can help students talk through how early thresholds influence today's world or the world of our early civilizations. Things like stars and chemical elements, which sound like science but are important in big history. Drawing on and evaluating a range of sources is a central feature of all disciplinary inquiry, and this course is no exception. Central to the Big History Project is the practice of claim testing. We don't want students blindly accepting new claims, even if they're coming from David Christian, Bob Bain, or any of the scholars in this course. We'll cover claim testing in more detail later, but the gist is that we're teaching kids to use intuition, logic, authority, and empirical evidence to help them decide if a claim is valid, and just as important, to help them support their own claims. If you think about how we get so much of our information today, you can see how critical it is for students to learn this skill. Since the Big History course draws on content from many disciplines, we also help students develop skills in multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary thinking. One way we do this is with the what do you know, what do you ask activities. As new disciplines are introduced, you present students with a big question or a contemporary problem. This might be a current event like responding to a refugee crisis or something local like a recent archaeological discovery. Students are tasked with assembling a multidisciplinary team of experts and they have to come up with the types of questions each expert might be able to answer. Yes, we all know the eye roll you get when you try too hard to show how ripped from the headlines all the lessons are. 
The difference here is that with this type of activity, these connections happen naturally and often. These kids might even see them before you do. Finally, we want students to be thoughtful about the way they communicate their conclusions, whether in writing or discussion. The activities of BHP provide a number of opportunities for students to write, present, and discuss their positions. As they review their own work, claim testing is a reliable tool for helping students think about and support their claims. One of the most significant projects in the course is called Little Big History. This is an end of course assessment that invites students to choose an object or idea they care about and then tell the history of that object through at least three thresholds. One of the thresholds has to be pre-human and they have to include the perspective of at least three disciplines. This activity provides students with a real opportunity to form their own questions and research them. Several schools have used this project to show what students have been doing in the course by holding a little Big History Night. It's kind of a science fair where kids get to present their work. Big exhibitions like this are a terrific way to really push students to think through and polish their work, and it's also a great way for them to learn from each other. We also have activities in each unit called investigations, which develop student skills for tackling big questions. They'll find, use, and evaluate sources, apply concepts, and communicate their conclusions. A quick word about presentations. BHP uses a single presentation rubric throughout the course so kids have a clear set of guidelines for communicating their conclusions. So there you have it, just a quick recap. One, begin each unit or activity with a driving question and ask students to share their initial conjectures and theories. All the activities and materials are possible resources to answer the question or resolve the problem and to evaluate the claims in those resources. Two, use historical and scientific concepts to think about the question or problem. Three, help students draw and evaluate information from a wide variety of disciplines to explore these questions. Four, push students to communicate their conclusions effectively throughout the course. That's all for now. Be sure to visit our blog or the BHP teacher community to talk more in depth about research and inquiry in big history.